Thank you, Stacey. So the session today is divided in two sections. First, we'll be hearing from our panelists to unpack a bit more about the importance of prevention for the protection of refugee and forcibly displaced children and their families. We have first, our first speaker is Jonathan Snor, the Humanitarian Program Specialist at the US State Department Bureau for Population, Refugees and Migration. And he will talk to us about why investing in prevention in refugee settings is so crucial. Then we'll have hand over to Amel Amirali, who is our colleague at the CPGVB officer at the Child Protection Unit, Unit CR Geneva, and she will talk about Unit CR approach to prevention. Then you will have to listen a little bit more from me on how strengthening multi-sectoral coordination on children's protection and mainstreaming can significantly contribute to preventing child protection risks in humanitarian settings. And lastly, we'll have Kobo Esul, who is the Child Protection in Emergency Specialist for Plan International in Lake Chad, talking about child marriage prevention in child protection in emergency programming. The second part of the session will be breaking into rooms to do some group work and share ideas, experiences, anything that you want to talk to us about city actors and not city actors, how can enhance the prevention in refugee settings, as well as what are some of the key messages we would like to be passing, conveying to donors to prioritize and invest in prevention. This section will be facilitated by our colleague Inur, who is a CP officer at the UNHCR headquarters in Geneva. And I would just like to take just one more second to thank thanks to all the panelists today from UNHCR, Save the Children, Plan International, and BPRN, and of course to the Alliance for giving us the opportunity to be here today, sharing and learning with all of you. And without further delay, I am pleased to hand over to our first speaker, Jonathan, from the U.S. State Department Bureau of Population, Refugees and Migration. Over to you, John. Hi, thank you so much, Monica. And thank you all for having me here today. It's an honor. Protecting children from abuse, violence, exploitation, and neglect is urgent in humanitarian settings. Not only is child protection essential for child survival and well-being, it is critical for healthy long-term development so that all children can thrive into adulthood. As the largest single humanitarian donor, the United States is a powerful champion for refugee children. The United States has made significant investments in the global child protection architecture, and it is proud to support international and non-governmental organizations in addressing the unique needs of children during humanitarian crises, including preventative action from the start of crises. We are proud to have supported UNHCR's evaluation of child protection, which highlighted partner strengths and continued challenges, including the need to support prevention alongside response programming to better support children, their families, and their communities. When it comes to child protection, local communities, caregivers, and importantly, children themselves know best, which is why the United States supports local community-led approaches to child protection and views partnering with local child protection organizations and youth-led organizations as a key step toward this progress, toward this goal. We have much to learn from children and their communities, and the U.S. will continue to center children's voices and meaningful community participation across our work. We encourage participants here to think creatively about ways to build this participation early on in programming. The United States is putting our commitments to principled child protection into action. We are supporting what works to protect children in emergencies, such as case management and cash assistance, child safe spaces, parenting skills training, child-friendly psychosocial support, birth registration, and family tracing and reunification, and now an emphasis on prevention as a core component in child protection. We all have a role to play in generating an evidence base of good practice on prevention and humanitarian child protection. As the prevention framework highlights, Collaboration with other sectors is vitally important to advance our prevention goals through identifying child protection risk and protective factors and integrated program design for preventative services and supports. The United States recognizes this, which is why we invested specifically in Save the Children to work with UNHCR to ensure collaboration across sectors to advance child protection. So in conclusion, we look forward to the following discussion and further collaboration on ways we can collectively improve humanitarian responses for refugee children. Thank you again. Thanks for having me. 
And now I will pass things along to our next speaker, Amel Amirali, who is the Child Protection and GBV Officer in the Child Protection Unit at UNHCR. Over to you, Amel. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm going to start by giving some information uh, about UNHCR work on prevention uh, in uh, refugee settings. Uh, and the information I'm going to give is really what we would try to learn during the last few years uh, about how are we doing prevention, how are we effectively preventing child protection risks. As you all know, uh, children represent 41% of forcibly displaced populations, and many of them spend their whole childhood in displacement. So we're talking about an average uh, length of displacement of 17 years, which is almost, you know, the whole life of a child is spent in, in displacement. Um, we also, because we know that the multifaceted nature of risks uh, to children and interconnection between the different aspects of children's life mean that harm to children requires addressing the interconnected causes of the child protection risks. And this can definitely not be done by child protection actors alone. Uh, so we really now pushing towards more uh, you know, working with each other to prevent help, help uh, to prevent uh, child protection risks and harm against children. We did some evaluations during the last few years. We wanted to understand how, after all these years of work on response to child protection, we're still not able to cope up. And we understood that um, UNHCR and partners' interventions are actually mostly focused on response, and there is a, a very little work being done on prevention. We understood that um, uh, the limited prevention work is making us impossible to move from that, you know, um, uh, intervention uh, programming. And then that as UNHCR and partners, we are not very clear what should we do to prevent child protection harm. So we were looking forward into addressing these gaps. We needed to identify and build capacity uh, on evidence-based child protection interventions. We also did more uh, to look into what we are doing right and what we need to improve. So for example, we tried to look into our regional response plans, which is you know, uh, the interagency refugee response planning and look into how we are, um, uh, well, how we are doing in terms of prevention of children. Uh, we identify the desegregation by age and gender and integration of child protection risks in the analysis as being one important aspect that should be part uh, of our refugee response planning. The second priority was to ensure in specialized child protection programs available and address prevention and response. And then third priority is ensuring that child protection considerations are mainstreamed across um, the sectors. However, we also realize that we are not yet there. Uh, we did several analysis of our um, refugee response plans. And as you see uh, on the screen, uh, we can see that CP is not systematically included in RRP. We then created a guidance that, to integrate prevention and other aspects to make sure CP is properly um, reflected in RRPs. There are a lot of gaps and areas of improvement, age disaggregation not systematic, holistic child protection risks are not systematically outlined, and then of course considerations for child protection mainstream in other sectors is not yet there. So we are working towards improving that because we realize that in refugee situations, is, this is a, a very important document that sets the tone for, for our work, uh, especially in emergencies. And then some of the work that we are doing to, to ensure that we're building on what we learned is that we made prevention uh, an integral part of our upcoming policy. Uh, so uh, for us, prevention is not only having dedicated prevention programs, but is also making sure that all of our staff and partners are able to identify uh, the risks uh, and to prevent the harm uh, across all the responses to ensure that all of our work has child-friendly communication, participation, accountability included. Uh, we wanted to ensure that sectoral contributions to preventing harm is very important, uh, including safe and include, uh, inclusive education, addressing uh, the economic drivers of child protection risks, and safe and healthy communities for children. And then that child-sensitive protection and solutions are put in place, including making sure that all of our refugee procedures, uh, in, um, especially you know, a registration, refugee status determination, and durable solutions are child-friendly. And, uh, and then finally, we want to be able to implement evidence-based child protection prevention programming. 
And with that, I am going to hand, you can see more information in child protection data report, UNHCRCP evaluation and CP coordination refugee settings on all the efforts we're trying to put in place to or, you know, increase our work in prevention and make it uh, more comprehensive and cross-sectoral. Uh, so I'll hand over to Monica now uh, to speak more about um, the work on uh, working with other sectors to prevent harm. Over to you, Monica. Thanks, Amal, for a very interesting presentation on the approach to UNHCR to prevention. Um, next slide, please. Uh, I would like now to present the work that UNHCR, Save Children, and the CPMS Working Group at the Alliance have been implementing on child protection, mainstreaming, and integration through their partnership at the global level funded by BPRM, and how that work on mainstreaming and prevention are very linked under the premise that by strengthening multi-sectoral collaboration and coordination on children's protection, we can then significantly contribute to prevention too. And this is among other things that we'll see during the presentation, working closely with other sectors to identify common protection risks and needs, and also to ensure no further harm is occurring to children through regular sectoral programming. If we move to the next slide, please. So I was mentioning the program aims to advance that work across sectors for children's protection in refugee context and in line with Pillar 4 of the CPMS. So over the last year and a half or so, we have been aiming to see greater implementation of mainstreaming work in refugee settings through a range of activities. As you can see here, we have been working on three main areas. Well, we've been working in many other areas, but we have highlighted three here today that we believe are the most relevant. Building of capacity, a strategic engagement on sectoral policy development, and then tailored technical support to field level coordination groups. So the first one that you can see there is being about supporting the learning of protection and non-protection actors on CP mainstreaming the theory behind what is mainstreaming, global commitments, standards, the principles, but especially also making sure that CP and non-CP protection and non-protection colleagues um, know how to make practical adjustments to their daily work across the program cycle to make sure that children are protected through regular sectoral programming, programming sorry, and also to ensure that our colleagues from other sectors are prioritizing safety and security and well-being and avoiding causing further harm to the children they work with. Um, the, second, um, the second area, the second um, um, line of work that we've been looking at is ensuring that the protection of children is adequately included in sectoral policies, standards, learning and development opportunities for non-protection actors. Why? Because we know that by including the child protection lenses into sectoral policies, guidance documents, our colleagues from those sectors are also more likely to see the benefits, to see the advantage and then positive outcomes in their, in their own programming. And then lastly, we have also been focusing on providing tailored technical support to in-country um, um, child protection coordination mechanisms in refugee settings to enhance again the collaboration with other sectors. And this is including um, conducting interagency child protection mainstreaming workshops, bringing again child protection and non-child protection actors to, to talk to each other, and also the development on some practical tools on how to advance this work. Next slide, please. So then when we say that all humanitarian actors, irrespectively of the sector, can contribute to the protection and hence the prevention, what do we actually mean by this? So in this slide, you can see um, it shows core, five core actions, practical actions that all humanitarian actors, WASH, uh, education, health, CCCM, livelihood, uh, et cetera, can include in the design and implementation of the daily programs to contribute to the protection and well-being of children and therefore again to prevention of harm. So the first one that we have listed there is safe and equitable access for children. And a concrete example of this would be the example of including or mainstreaming child protection components into sectoral situation and analysis, need assessment, et cetera, so that we are able to jointly identify and respond to common needs and then address those barriers for most vulnerable children to access services. Once we have done that, then we have the second one, which talks about adapting services to the needs of children. So once those needs are well identified in a holistic manner, 
then child protection and non-child protection colleagues can design services and prevention strategies according to the specific compounding needs of children and obviously also according to their age, their gender, legal status, disability status, etc. The third one that you can see, the third core action that you can see on the screen, we believe that is absolutely crucial and is prioritizing safety and well-being and about causing harm when implementing programs. So this entails working with our sector colleagues and all humanitarian uh, actors for that matter to provide assistance in a way that is does not further expose children to harm, physical hassles, violence, abuse through our regular programming and two, reduces the risk that children might be already facing or are uh, at risk to face. And then obviously meeting their needs with dignity. So basically this is about promoting safe programming and avoiding poor design and implementation that we all know that can lead to unintended negative outcomes for children. The fourth one that we have listed here as the core action, and we believe this is very crucial too, is to strengthen sectoral police capacities to identify and refer children at risk. This action is particularly crucial, and we've been also talking about it in different other sessions of, of this uh, annual meeting, um, to ensure that sector colleagues have the basic understanding of what child well-being is, why child protection uh, is essential, some of the principles, the do no harm, the best interest for the child, and some of the approaches that we use to put in practice child protection, and that they also know how to identify and safely refer children at risk to child protection teams or to other adequate services. And then lastly, and we again have been extensively discussing this topic during this annual meeting, is how important it is to hold accountability for children. So we talk here about um, protection and non-protection actors to be well prepared to know how adequately communicate with children, how to make sure that uh, we are including meaningful child participation and child-friendly accountability mechanisms into the regular programming. So these core five actions, which are now also, as Amel was mentioning, reflected in the upcoming UNHCR child protection policy, are some of the practical ways that uh, all sectors can, can use to contribute to the prevention, protection and prevention of children. And then if we move to the next slide, I wanted to uh, quickly show you a practical example. Uh, this is a child protection and education mainstream program that's been implemented by UNHCR and DRC in Kakuma refugee camps in Kenya. And here you can see they have included in this program, in the design of this program, the five components, the five core actions that we have discussed in the previous slide. So for example, the first one about removing barriers and access for children, it tallies obviously to equitable access. So what they did was to advocate for school flexibility in terms of readmission of students that maybe have dropped out due to a protection concern. This could be children that are working or um, children that are engaged in child marriage, pregnant students, etc., or even those that wanted to enroll but didn't have any birth certificate or any other scholastic records from their country's origin. So they have actually advocated for schools to, to, to be more flexible when, when providing access to all children. Then secondly, they have also prioritized safety and dignity and avoid causing harm, as we discussed before, how crucial this is. Um, and, 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 and they have ensured that they are implementing child-friendly learning environments and including here a concrete example, which I thought it was very crucial, um, on ensuring that they have separate toilet facilities and a specific program on menstrual hygiene for girls and boys, which for this one also, they collaborated with the WASH colleagues too. So they were education, WASH and child protection working together. Uh, then they had again the strengthening the capacity of teachers, which again it, we talk about how important it is also to strengthen the, the capacity of our sector colleagues. And this part I thought it was really cool, very interesting, as they train a group of teachers to become protection focal points. So this group of teachers received training on again uh, child well-being, child protection, all the principles, CPMS, and also um, child safeguarding procedures, safety identification, and PFA, psychosocial first aid, so that these teachers actually could act as focal points for children um, protection inside the school. They also set up an interagency referral pathway, including referral to different 
um, services that children could need and including also cash assistance for families in need of monetary support to, for example, purchase school uniforms or school materials. So that makes sure again that not children were, was left behind for that reason. And then lastly, they also set up a child-friendly feedback uh, mechanism, including um, feedback boxes where children could just give their opinions and, and express uh, um, how, how the program was, uh, was doing. And also um, they created a free hotline number, again, for students in need to be able to, to call, to use and to provide feedback uh, on the program. And with that, with this very nice example, I will just stop here my presentation and hand over to my colleague from Plan International, Kobo. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup, Monica, de m'avoir accordé la parole. Je vais m'exprimer en français pour uh, les besoins de l'assistance. Uh, ma présentation sera focalisée sur le mariage des enfants dans le contexte euh, humanitaire, surtout la prévention du mariage des enfants dans le contexte humanitaire. Permettez que je puisse éteindre ma caméra pour la qualité de la connexion et je voudrais m'exprimer beaucoup plus librement. Merci. En fait, un plan international met en œuvre dans plusieurs contextes et dans plusieurs pays des programmes et projets de prévention sur le mariage des enfants. Récemment, d'ailleurs, au niveau du Niger, nous venons en collaboration avec le HF de finir la mise en œuvre d'un programme pilote de prévention sur le mariage des enfants. Et nous aimerions alors, par cette petite présentation, essayer d'échanger avec vous les raisons pour lesquelles nous devrions tous travailler davantage sur le sujet et aussi essayer d'échanger avec vous euh, des petites leçons apprises dans le travail de prévention sur euh, le mariage des enfants. Next slide, please. Prochain slide. Alors, euh, en quoi consiste la prévention des mariages des enfants dans les situations humanitaires Nous sommes souvent euh, confrontés à un certain nombre de questions communes ou de réflexions communes liées à la situation de mariage des enfants dans le contexte humanitaire. La première réflexion ou la première question que l'on se pose quand on met en œuvre le projet de mariage des enfants dans le contexte humanitaire, c'est celle de savoir est-ce que le taux de mariage des enfants augmenterait à la suite des crises ou des situations humanitaires euh, par rapport à cette première réflexion, euh, la réponse, bien sûr, euh, est oui. Lorsqu'il y a des situations de crise humanitaire, euh, le taux de mariage des enfants arrive à augmenter. La seconde question ou la deuxième réflexion qu'on aimerait euh, pouvoir lancer, euh, est-ce que dans le contexte humanitaire, on serait en mesure de pouvoir... Euh, à stopper ou bien éradiquer ou bien mettre fin aux situations de mariage des enfants. Euh, suite à cette deuxième réflexion, la réponse, bien sûr, est non. Euh, Quelles que soient le, euh, les actions qu'on aura à mener, il est vraiment difficile de pouvoir mettre fin à la situation de mariage des enfants, quel que soit le contexte, mais nos actions pourraient contribuer à les limiter et peut-être aussi à, un peu, à réduire l'impact. Sur, euh, sur les enfants, sur la communauté, sur, euh, sur les familles. Euh, en deuxième lieu, essayons de voir un peu, est-ce que vous pouvez nous aider avec euh, le diapo, parce que le diapo n'arrive pas à avancer. Nous sommes au diapo numéro 3. Monica? Yeah. Can, can someone help with moving the slides to Kovo, please? Third slide, please. Okay. Is this the right one, Kobo? C'est le bon diapo, Kobo. Il faudrait encore bouger. Uh, non, c'est le, le diapo lié au défi. Uh, the one on challenges, Monica, please. 
I'm not controlling. I think Stacy, the producers, who are controlling the slide. Challenges. Yeah. Apologies, Kovo. Allez-y, Kovo. Okay. Uh, Essayons de voir un peu quels sont les défis principaux dans le cadre de la prévention des mariages de, des enfants. Euh, comme vous le savez, la prévention des mariages des enfants est très complexe et souvent très délicate en raison de ses racines dans l'inégalité de genre et ses conséquences sur les normes sociales. Euh, je vais d'abord donner un exemple. Euh, lorsque les efforts sont déployés pour prévenir le mariage des enfants, il se concentre généralement sur les conséquences dans les communautés et beaucoup d'acteurs qui y travaillent sont beaucoup plus dans le jugement. Et les messages sont souvent transmis aux familles et aux comités sous forme euh, de messages où les personnes arrivent un peu à critiquer euh, les actes qu'ils com commettent par rapport au mariage des enfants et ne sont pas pour autant adaptés euh, à la cible. Et ce qui crée un peu, un peu plus de... De, de, de problèmes lorsqu'on met en place des projets. Alors, euh, avec le programme que l'on a mis en place avec le ACER, on a pu euh, essayer euh, en neuf étapes euh, d'asseoir euh, un programme de prévention des mariages des enfants euh, à l'initiative de la communauté. Next slide. Prochain slide. Alors, dans ces neuf étapes, en collaboration avec euh, le, le HCR, nous avons d'abord essayé de comprendre le contexte. Quel était le contexte en place sur le mariage des enfants? Et en second lieu, on a essayé de voir comment cartographier les parties prenantes, notamment les décideurs, les personnes influentes. Ensuite, on a essayé de voir... Euh, comment cartographier les ressources et les programmes de prévention qui existent et comment organiser les ateliers de conception communautaire. Après, on a essayé de voir comment travailler avec les parties prenantes ou les organisations locales. Et enfin, on a fait, au niveau de la sixième étape, un test pilote sur le matériel de prévention. Et sur base de ça, euh, on a essayé ensuite de réviser le matériel de prévention, de mettre en place des plans de distribution et euh, enfin, on a fait l'évaluation de l'efficacité. Le, Alors, quelles sont les leçons apprises par rapport à cela? Euh, voici euh, de manière succincte quelques leçons apprises. La première leçon apprise est que euh, la prévention des mariages des enfants et d'autres formes de violence liées au sexe est possible dans des situations humanitaires et peut donner des résultats positifs lorsqu'elle est menée en collaboration avec les membres de la communauté, en particulier les filles qui sont déjà mariées. Donc, il est possible et réellement d'assurer une très bonne prévention. Euh, à un second degré, souvent, euh, la communauté ne souhaite pas que cette pratique se poursuive. Dans leur entendement, euh, bien qu'elle soit réellement, vraiment largement répandue dans les nombreux contextes, euh, il convient souvent de discuter avec la communauté du moment opportun pour lancer des efforts et euh, des de préventions afin d'assurer que qu'elle que sera vraiment réceptive et qu'elle va s'en approprier et se va se concentrer sur le besoin de survie de, de des personnes vivant de mariage des enfants et de la communauté également. Euh, au troisième niveau, euh, il, il va falloir impliquer les différents membres de la communauté de manière à ce qu'ils sont capables de participer et de s'approprier le projet. Par exemple, vous pouvez envisager d'organiser une, euh, prépar une session préparatoire à l'avance pour expliquer davantage et montrer des exemples d'activités avec certains membres de la communauté qui ont moins l'habitude de donner leur avis afin que leurs attentes soient prises en compte et soient bien claires euh, et leurs responsabilités soient réellement engagées. Euh, quelles sont encore les autres leçons apprises? Euh, lors des activités de conception, plutôt que de poser des questions directes qui peuvent être intimidantes et moins dynamiques, euh, on doit utiliser une gamme d'activités participatives culturellement appropriées, comme des storyboards, 
des jeux de rôle ou des activités créatives pour répondre aux différents styles euh, de communication. Euh, enfin, euh, on doit s'assurer qu'il a été bien réfléchi de la manière d'assurer la sécurité psychologique de tous les participants, en particulier les femmes et les jeunes filles. Par exemple, utiliser des études de cas fictifs sur le mariage des enfants pour éviter de demander euh, des, des forces, des, des, des histoires qui peuvent aussi créer des frustrations auprès de participants. Alors, comment la gestion des cas peut-il assurer euh, la prévention Nous prenons par exemple le cas du, du Niger où on a pu travailler. Alors, qu'est-ce qu'on a, qu qu a constaté On a constaté, bien sûr, qu'au Niger, euh, il y a des assistantes sociaux avec qui nous avons travaillé dans la prévention. Ces derniers rencontrent des filles mariées, mais aussi, plus fréquemment, des filles qui sont à risque de mariage. Alors, euh, du fait que ces gestionnaires des cas sont au contact avec ces personnes-là, ils arrivent à influer un peu sur les décisions par rapport au mariage des enfants et par conséquent participer aux activités de prévention. Qu'avons-nous fait alors euh, Nous avons organisé plusieurs ateliers de formation euh, à la gestion des cas de protection de l'enfant de VBG afin de partager et d'améliorer les connaissances sur le processus de gestion des cas de protection de l'enfant. Euh, sur base des informations fournies par les gestionnaires des cas, nous avons organisé des consultations avec les chefs religieux et communautaires pour mieux comprendre le point de vue sur le divorce et la séparation des adolescents afin de décourager cette pratique et d'aider les filles divorcées ou séparées à se réintégrer dans les communautés et à la recherche d'un soutien. Euh, on a aussi euh, essayé de travailler avec les gestionnaires des cas et les autres acteurs du système de gestion des cas euh, pour qu'ils soient mieux informés sur pourquoi et le comment du mariage d'enfants, euh, sur les personnes impliquées et sur les raisons, euh, euh, et surtout sur l'importance de les équiper pour qu'ils soient mieux outillés à influencer les familles et les filles contre les pratiques qui sont liées au mariage des enfants. Alors, euh, Qu'est-ce qu'il y a encore et qu'est-ce qu'on a pu encore faire au, euh, fait au Niger par rapport à la situation de mariage des enfants On a travaillé avec euh, le gouvernement et la coordination humanitaire pour donner la priorité de la lutte contre le mariage des enfants dans l'action humanitaire. Euh, ce travail nous a permis d'identifier les lacunes et les possibilités de collaboration avec le gouvernement et les mécanismes de coordination de l'aide humanitaire. Euh, voici euh, quelques-uns des domaines clés que je souhaite aborder pour euh, élaguer un peu cette situation. Nous avons identifié des défis communs à tous les contextes, notamment un manque de continuité à une connexion générale entre euh, ce qui se passait au niveau national et ce que la réponse humanitaire faisait pour lutter contre le mariage des enfants. Nous avons constaté aussi une attitude générale selon laquelle les acteurs humanitaires n'ont pas leur rôle pour euh, essayer de modifier le norme sociale préjudiciable. Et à un autre niveau, euh, dans tous les pays et dans toutes les régions, nous avons aussi constaté un manque de sensibilisation d'urgence et de priorité dans la lutte contre le mariage des enfants, malgré une prévalence clairement élevée dans de nombreux contextes. Alors, qu'est-ce que nous avons recommandé dans ces contextes-là euh, on a premièrement essayé de recommander d'inclure le mariage des enfants dans la liste des données et des objectifs, euh, surtout au niveau de la stratégie de HRP et du HNO, ainsi que dans d'autres sites d'évaluation des besoins et dans les planifications stratégiques. Euh, on a aussi essayé d'assurer la sensibilisation et informer les communautés humanitaires et surtout le, le donateur sur le lien entre euh, euh, les crises et le mariage des enfants, sur les données d'intervention actuelles et sur les réalités auxquelles sont confrontées les filles et leurs familles. Et enfin, on a essayé de coordonner avec le gouvernement, les acteurs nationaux, l'inclusion des groupes de réfugiés et des personnes déplacées dans la planification nationale, visant à mettre fin au mariage des enfants. 
Euh, un autre élément aussi à souligner, c'est vraiment l'alignement des structures de coordination de la protection de l'enfant pour diriger les efforts d'influence et d'apprentissage. Alors, euh, pour conclure, j'aimerais ainsi donc partager avec vous quelques enseignements clés. Euh, le premier enseignement, euh, s'il n'est pas possible de mettre fin à l'arrêt d'enfant par les biens des programmes humanitaires, nous pouvons vous prendre en mesure. Euh, vont prendre des mesures pour limiter et décourager le recours et suscite à cette pratique et établir un lien avec les efforts déployés avant la crise et mettre fin euh, pour mettre fin euh, pour mettre en place des éléments de base sur lesquels les acteurs euh, pourraient travailler euh, à plus long terme pour euh, euh, s'en appuyer. Euh, en second lieu, en s'attaquant au mariage des enfants, on contredit nos principes humanitaire et on met en danger les enfants, en particulier les adolescents. Euh, une autre recommandation, euh, nous devons influencer et éduquer les donateurs, les parties prenantes et les autres décideurs sur les raisons pour lesquelles euh, euh, cela constitue un problème de protection urgent qui nécessite un financement et euh, dans tous les contextes humanitaires ce qui n'est pas toujours le, le cas. Euh, pour enfin être efficace, les activités de prévention de mariage des enfants doivent être conçues en collaboration avec la communauté, en particulier les filles et les personnes occupant des postes de décision. Cela peut se faire que si la communauté est capable de donner la priorité à la lutte contre les normes sociales néfastes plutôt que à la survie. Voilà un peu en résumé ce que je peux dire euh, 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 par rapport au mariage des enfants dans, la, dans le contexte humanitaire, la prévention du mariage des enfants dans le contexte humanitaire. Je vous remets la parole, c'est nous pour la suite. Merci. C'est nous, au voiture. Thank you so much. It was really informative. Um, and hello, everyone, uh, colleagues who have recently joined us. Um, I'm Sidnur Babikir with UNHCR in the chapter Shin unit. Um, so now, before we move to the next uh, segment of this session, would be great if you can use action button to tell us how do you feel? There was a, a wealth of information, uh, lesson learned, challenges, and, and also success stories that have been shared with the colleagues. So we hope that really match your expectation. I don't see any reaction, so I assume everyone is happy. <laughs> That's, that would be my assumption. Um, so next now, we would like for you to have a time at the group um, to discuss with each other. So we'll be divided into three groups. Uh, can we, uh, thank you so much, Stacey, just to put the, the focus of each group. Um, so you will find yourself <laughs> in one of these groups, so hopefully it matches what you are expecting. If not, but it would be great also to contribute to the discussion. Um, the, each group will have 25 minutes to discuss um, the, the topic, uh, as you see in the screen. So group one will uh, discuss about what should good child protection actors do to enhance prevention in refugee settings. Group two, um, what should could other sectors do to enhance prevention in refugee settings, and I can see group three, but it will focus on um, working with donors, what we would like to, you know, them to consider and how we would like, uh, and how we can work with them. Um, so if for each group, you will have facilitators um, um, from our facilitation team who will uh, be ready to address any questions you have or, um, or guidance, but we do really encourage you to identify someone among yourself to um, come when we come back to the plenary to brief us on your discussion. We will use Jamboard um, to share your, your ideas and thoughts. Um, so, Stacey, it's over to you, and we'll see each other in 25 minutes. So, we're all back. I hope not everyone clicked on leaving the meeting. <laughs> so welcome everyone. Hopefully, um, I, I can see we, we lost a few colleagues, but I would like to invite the first group to share the key highlights from their discussion.
we have five minutes. So I think the first group was on child protection, right? Yes, child protection actors, please go ahead. Hi everyone. So I will present the group one. We had a very interesting discussions and we also had actually not just NGO and UN actors, but also SAID representing school, which I think is really, really important and interesting. Hopefully we'll have <clears throat> similar colleagues in the future seminars and annual uh, meetings on child protection. It's really important to, to kind of include other actors. So we kind of discussed based on the preparedness um, activities on the uh, PCM, like program cycle management. So uh, what we would suggest is to kind of as part of your preparedness before any, we, we focused on uh, kind of discuss some Ukraine crisis response, uh, a bit things of uh, Middle East, Morocco, Jordan, et cetera. So part of preparedness, it, it would be really um, important to, uh, to identify to and document risks and different protective factors. Uh, Mm, what children are experiences and uh, during, of course, the, the, uh, the emergency response to the crisis and include kind of different actors uh, to how in terms of how we are going to address these risks and how we are going to include the protective factors in our uh, preparedness plan. Um, so it's really important kind of to take early actions to prevent harm <clears throat> at the beginning. Then as part of the, our needs assessment, and situation analysis, specifically, it's important to, to collect all the information um, kind of from different sources on harmful outcomes to children uh, in that context. Um, and of course, part of is uh, we discussed uh, <clears throat> situation analysis, how it is important um, to include and kind of uh, include the factors associated with the harmful outcomes. Um, in terms of the design and planning, uh, it's, uh, we um, mentioned that it's really key to develop um, kind of a very strong, robust, uh, uh, contextualized theory of change and logical framework to prevent harm based, of course, and which the basis of the theory of change will be uh, based on our identified risks and the protective factors in the context. and. Um, what we highlight is that is the key for us is to really involve the children, the parents, the caregivers uh, in this in the plan, in the design interventions, kind of working with the com closely with the communities together, um, <clears throat> kind of to strategize on different approaches um, and kind of focus more so social ecological model. Um, so working with parents and caregivers is really key. And of course, this, this, in our context, we say it with the school and the relevant actors. And it kind of part of implementation, monitoring, evaluations, it's really important to adapt uh, any uh, our preventive interventions uh, based on kind of uh, monitor data that we have collected, um, based on the different focus group discussions we had, key informant interviews, uh, and kind of monitor different changes we see in the risks that we have identified and the protective fa factors during our implementation stage. As part of kind of more evaluation, of course, it's really uh, key to evaluate different changes, um, especially in the uh, harmful outcomes and share key learnings. This is something that we discussed. It, it's kind of part of the evidence based approach, uh, sheer key learnings on prevention, what worked well, what didn't, to kind of that will really um, contribute to our future programming, uh, et cetera. I hope I covered the main points, but feel free colleagues from my group to add if I have any, anything missed. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, other colleagues from the same team, if you have like very strong, um, message that uh, highlighted or everything is covered so we can no I think she really covered everything very well just uh, stressing again on the importance of working with other actors including the development actors and and the nexus in general uh, and um, you know also find and then the importance of having sectors contributing to the to prevention work 
Mm -hmm. um, it's, you know, preventing harm against children is the responsibility of everyone. And uh, CP actors implementing prevention program will never be enough if livelihood is not a, uh, available to parents, if education is not contributing to it and, and you know, all other sectors. Thanks. And Wonderful, thank I you could... so much. Go ahead, Susan. Sorry, Nora, thanks. I think if I could add one thing that came out really strongly from the conversation was also that, you know, all of these really great suggestions um, that came from the group um, also need to be tinged with a little bit of reality when child protection actors and child protection programming is often struggling for funding or reliant on very short-term funding. Prevention is not a short-term work, but rather something that requires the investment in communities and building up these relationships with children and families. Um, so we know we were the child protection group, um, but we just wanted to acknowledge um, that there is there needs to be that strong push for uh, to donors and and um, colleagues who are kind of seeing what we prioritize for fundraising as well. That you know without kind of more multi year and flexible funding, kind of appropriate investment in successful prevention programming will be really challenging. Great, thank you so much, Susanna. Um, if there is no additional points, moving to uh, the second group on what other sectors should be doing. Hi. So yes, coming to to this actually, it's um, we already started the conversation. We were just talking about um, cross sector um, support and, and, and work. And this is exactly what we talked about. We talked about um, how it is important to have a movement that is cross sector. And so we talked first about how to educate potentially the other sectors and the other actors um, in terms of child protection. So advocacy and key messages um, to communicate what, what child protection can do, but also um, for other sectors, uh, for child protection to know exactly what other sectors do so they can uh, potentially um, announce their own tools. We talked about messages in terms of prevention, resource mechanisms, services, again, to be adequately communicated. Um, we talked about, um, again, the linkages um, between all of the, um, the interventions. We talked as well about um, assess like an assessment that could be or assessments that could be done to understand um, how this can be announced. Um, and so we could build tools uh, to ensure that the other sectors would actually um, include child protection in a way in their interventions and programming. Um, for example, that can translate into um, physical safety. So when we talk about physical safety, we took one example that was quite interesting. When um, when you would get um, children that would be queuing in the heat, you know, to receive um, food or food packages. So this is one very tangible action that, or this is one tangible example that um, could be that we could build on to say, okay, how could we modify this type of setting so we can um, enhance the, 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 the physical safety of the child during, um, during these, um, these activities. Um, we talked about, again, educational and vocational training. Um, we talked about um, involving kids themselves in the conversation. So uh, conducting consultations with kids um, for other sectors. Um, and so this can be done again with um, colleagues from uh, either livelihoods or education um, or others, obviously. Um, so the, the, the views of the, the children themselves can be integrated into uh, programming. Um, and they can also feel, um, that they're 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 the active stakeholders in in the in those prevention mechanisms. Um, we talked about producing practical tools, and we talked about a checklist for each sector. 
So each sector knows more about how to integrate child prevention into their actions and activities. Um, and then um, we talked about common learning platforms. Uh, so uh, again, the, the other sectors could integrate those uh, very important key messages and key activities and, and, and toolkit. Someone is trying to talk. Um, and so, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that you didn't forget anything uh, major, but please feel free to jump in if I have. Thanks, Frank. No, just to add that, that was wonderful. Uh, Nora, just to add that, um, again, like uh, you covered it all, but that one of the recurrent topics that we also have been discussing in, in other bits and pieces of this conference and, and other forums is just that need for um, the cross sharing and cross knowledge across sectors so that the more we understand and know about what our child, our health colleagues do and our watch colleagues do and our livelihood colleagues do, the more we understand their nitty gritty of the programming, how it works, the better we are able and vice versa, the better then we will be able to find um, common grounds and common points and entry points for, for our collaboration and, and working um, together. So that was just a reflection that was um, discussed at the group and we think it's worth mentioning. Thank you and over to the next group. If, if oh, sorry, if and not- Sorry, maybe maybe one, one, one last thing. Uh, we yes, talked yes. about accountability as well. And accountability, mm -hmm. I believe uh, was mentioned because it was seen as something very important that was not just, um, I want to say that the business or the works of the child protection groups or staff, but really accountability of all actors in, you know, in, in working towards child protection and integrating this aspect um, in their work. Thank you, Fran. Super, thank you so much. Um, now moving to the last group and engagement with donors. Sylvia, over to you. Thank you, Nora. Um, so um, this group, we were like very few and we had like very interesting discussion. I'm going to uh, structure into a bit like, you know, uh, the overall uh, umbrella that we had discussed and then some of the challenges and solutions. So we, um, we had started by saying that we clearly can't for bring Engage donors. We know now that that prevention works. That is like cost effective. Um, that we have like a framework that has like principles along the program management cycle. So that's more broadly uh, the core key messages that we want to you know to all donors to know and understand more in particular. Um, however, some of the challenges that we had discussed in this group is the need to work uh, hand in hand with communities. And we heard from the presentations today on the importance of tackling like social norms um, and to design interventions together with communities and that that takes time. And sometimes the, because of like uh, pressure for like you know, specific outputs and outcomes. So we had been, um, you know, discussing about like the challenges having short term grants mm -hmm. and maybe thinking about more like long term uh, in parallel uh, that could not focus maybe the short term as much in like outputs or also like be more realistic from ourselves, what we can achieve um, in a short term uh, activity or project. Um, we also had some um, contribution from other like livelihood colleagues uh, sharing some of the challenges in terms of um, donor wanting to see more like quick gains um, and also sometimes not prioritizing um, like child labor, FGM, or child marriage at the very beginning, also not being maybe like prioritized by communities. Um, however, um, we see as a solution or like an area that we can explore and engage donors with is around the integration and the work with uh, other sect like livelihoods. We explore more livelihoods in detail, but also with other uh, sectors. And by explaining, you know, by being able to provide uh, information on how to reduce risks and strengthen the protective factors, um, and how we could maybe elaborate more on the, some of the pillars that UNHCR presented today on how 
we could have like safe referrals um, and what can be you know done from other sectors and what other like more like technical work uh, like PSS or like case management can be done by child protection. So how we can you know understand better how we work with um, the other sectors and how we can explain these to to donors uh, uh, so that like child protection has a role um, in other also other sectors and there's also funding available for for child protection uh, for prevention in you know in the long term but also the short term projects um, and then in terms of mechanism. Uh, we were thinking about like joint donor briefings, and I think we didn't explore much more. But that's one of the of the ideas. Uh, maybe Camila or Nora, if you want to add anything else. Thank you so much, Silvia. Camila, do you um, do you have any additional thoughts? No, I I think that was uh, you covered it really well. Thank you. Super. Thank you so much, colleagues. I think this was really great, and. Um, Maybe it, it's, it's the best kind of close of, the, of uh, the today's session, which is really rich, um, starting by Jonathan sharing with us the importance of um, uh, focus on prevention in our humanitarian action, um, and then sharing experience of UNHCR in terms of how as an agency, but also as a at an interagency level, the coordination of refuge in refugee settings, uh, what were the lessons learned and how um, um, what action put in place to address those lessons, but also the approach. And I think colleagues keep referring to the pillars that you'll find it in the presentation that will be shared. And then we move to um, to Monica, who shared with us uh, the importance of working across sector and articulating core actions that should be taken by everyone, not only for child protection, but all other sectors for safe access and preventing further harm. Um, and there was interesting hearing from Kovo about the child marriage, um, the challenges they have faced in Asia, but also the, 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 uh, the programming and preventing child marriage and the lesson learned. And we came to the our group discussion, which we focus on three main areas with engaging with as child protection actors, what we should and could do. Um, also working with sectors, what we should and could do. Uh, and finally, our key messages to donors. And just to summarize, um, the key uh, highlights of the group discussion, and, and it seems that we have agreement across the groups. A, prevention is a shared responsibility, and there's a strong emphasis on accountability. It's not the responsibility only of child protection. Preventing uh, protection risk facing children is the responsibility of everyone engaged in humanitarian action, all sectors across. Um, and that's kind of, uh, I would say, the, the main message came from all the groups. Second, we have to be very clear in articulating what prevention entails and means. Um, and that could be also done through um, engagement with other sectors, understanding their own processes, um, producing or disseminating um, practical and emphasis on practical guidance and tools on what others and us need to do to prevent um, child protection risk. Also, the, um, there's a great emphasis on meaningful participation of children and communities, as most of the prevention work also related to uh, social norms and behaviors. And that takes time. And without the full engagement and the prevention work, then everything we are doing might not yield the results that we are aiming for. Um, also, we spoke about how it's important to work with development actors. Uh, emphasis on um, ensuring that prevention is considered throughout the program management cycle from preparedness to evaluation um, and how we should be clear about what actions to take place, what, what we need to consider in each uh, step. And finally also, uh, and, and this is the key message, not only for donors, but everyone, prevention work takes time. Because as we mentioned, it is related to changing attitudes and behavior. And sometimes our funding cycle and programming cycles, either annual or biannual, uh, does not really um, kind of take of con into consideration that changing something has been happening for decades cannot happen in a few months or even in a few years. And that needs to be considered from both donor side, but also from our side. So we are not over 
promising and then under uh, delivering. Uh, you have to be clear on uh, the time frame, what can be achieved within a specific time frame, what could be achieved at the onset of the emergency, and what could be achieved in the longer term. I hope I have summarized uh, this session, and I would like to thank all of you for the your generous contribution and participation. I think this was one of the um, key key session in the in the, the, the annual meeting, and the other many other session contribute. And um, we hear from the discussion yesterday also a kind of brought mm -hmm. to this discussion. And I will hand uh, over to I think Monica uh, for the closure remark or Stacey, <laughs> over to you. Thank you so much. Please.